This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I am so ready. So let's just get to our... Huh? Someone is knocking on my studio door. Okay, I'm coming. Well, this is a first. Uh, I opened the door and there was a package. This huge box. This is exciting. Somebody sent me something. Oh, I wonder what it could be. And there's another box inside. Okay, let me just open this one. There's another box. Now there's a smaller box inside of that box. Okay, this one has to have something in it. Nope. Just a smaller box. And a smaller one. And a smaller one. Okay, this box is so small, there is no way that there is another... There is another box. Okay, this one has to be it. This is so tiny. It's like... It's like the size of a postage stamp. Okay, opening it. Oh, there's a laptop. Three laptops. Three tiny laptops. I just got an email. Dear Rhea, thanks for opening our package for us. We've been having some issues with our laptops. If you could leave them on the floor, one of us will retrieve them. Sincerely, the Studio Spiders. P.S. Wasn't that funny? Ha ha. Hmm, well, (laughs) having issues with your laptops, are you? You want me to leave your brand new shiny laptops out for you? Is that right? So you can write more emails to me? Hmm, fine. But I expect some nice comments today. Okay, I'll just set them down right here. Let's get to the story. It's called Little Hedgehog and the Treehouse. Take it away, Bonnie and Lotta. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You have to imagine them however you want. Okay, let's go. Little Hedgehog and BB, her best friend of all time, were having a sleepover at Little Hedgehog's burrow. It was the end of the day, and the sun was just slipping below the tree line. The burrow was quiet. The only sounds were of BB sleeping, Dad snoring, and Little Hedgehog sleep whispering. <laughs> a ladder up to the moon. Build it with a teeth. Bibi woke up. She heard Little Hedgehog muttering to herself and ambled over to listen. Hmm, What will it be? Oh, no, 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 no. That is so silly. We will build. Bibi couldn't quite make out what her friend was saying. She leaned over a little further. A little further, and a tree house. Little Hedgehog suddenly sat up in bed, eyes still closed, huge grin on her face. Her head knocked right into Beebe's, and Beebe went sailing across the room. Ah! Boom. <gasps> oh no! Little Hedgehog leapt from her bed and went to Beebe's side. Do not worry, BB. I will save you from your injuries. Do you know your name? BB, what year is it? I'm okay. Oh, thank goodness. I was about to call an ambulance owl. Little Hedgehog helped BB up from the ground. BB dusted off her prickles and blinked. BB? Yes, Little Hedgehog. What were you doing standing over me like that? Did you see Tiny Creature in my prickles? Was it dancing? That would have been interesting and would explain my stance above you. But no, you were 
talking in your sleep. <gasps> I was? Yes. Really? Yes. Baby, <gasps> do you know what this means? We My are sleep going self to has build finally a decided house. to communicate with us. Wait a second. Baby, what did you just say? Just before you woke up and sent me flying across the room. I'm so sorry about that, BB. It's fine. Just before that happened, when you were still asleep, you said the word treehouse. Treehouse? Yes. Treehouse? Yes. BB. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We are, we are going, going to, to build, build a treehouse. Tree house. An hour later, they were hard at work. Well, kind of. They were at Little Hedgehog's desk, brainstorming what they'd like to include on the treehouse. BB was carefully drawing each new feature in 3D. It needs a spiral staircase. And a window in the ceiling. A skylight. Yes. And a garage where we can park our bikes. Mr. Hedgehog appeared in the doorway. You have bikes? Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look, but didn't reply. Hi, Dad. Greetings, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog peered at the detailed blueprints beneath BB's tiny paws. He squinted and took a sip of his tea. Oh, BB, maybe we should add a fireplace to the treehouse. It might get cold in there, especially since it'll have so many windows. I am skilled at starting fires. Anyone can do it with the right know-how. It's important to have very dry wood to begin with. I typically peel strips of the dry wood and create a sort of tinder nest. Ah, uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea to have a fireplace, Dad said, picturing his tiny daughter in front of a raging fire. Okay, Dad, I guess we can skip the fireplace. Little Hedgehog and BB giggled. But we need an elevator. BB quickly began sketching an elevator. An elevator? Isn't your treehouse going to be just one story? One story is never enough, Dad. One story cannot possibly contain the depths of our imaginations, Mr. Hedgehog. He blinked, nodded, and went off to have breakfast. Little Hedgehog, before we get too far, we should probably take our plans to a real architect to ensure the treehouse will be structurally sound. I'm simply an amateur, but my neighbor, Ms. Jams, is a professional architect. They went off to visit Ms. Jams. Soon, they were in Ms. Jams's burrow, explaining their plans for the treehouse. Ms. Jams had just woken up and was still in her polka dot pajamas. When she heard knocking on her burrow door, she thought it was her nightly crossword puzzle delivery. Instead, Little Hedgehog and BB bustled inside, their eyes wide. Now, Ms. Jams sipped a tiny cup of coffee and squinted as these two small hedgehogs described the features they wanted included in their treehouse design. And a helipad. And a mud room. A trampoline. A green roof. A roller coaster. A climbing wall. A zero-gravity tank. And a knitting corner. And a trapeze arena. And a reading nook. Oh, oh, and one of those fancy dangly light thingies? Baby, what is that called? A chandelier. Yes, one of those. Okay, well, Ms. Jam said, taking a long sip of her coffee. These are all very inventive ideas. This was an excellent brainstorming session. Lots of creativity. Little Hedgehog and BB clapped their teensy paws together. Stars danced lightly in their eyes. I can tell you that... They won't all be possible to achieve. <sighs> Structurally, that is. I have to consider the amount of land you have. Oh, okay. The types of trees in the area. Too true. The annual rainfall. Oh my. And the above-ground building restrictions set in place by the village council. 
That makes total sense, Ms. Jams. We appreciate your expertise, Ms. Jams. Uh, thank you. So, I can design you a treehouse that includes a reading nook. Yes. yes. And a knitting corner. Yes. yes. And the zero gravity room. A climbing wall. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to say and just then. That was misleading. I'm just still waking up, you see. Ms. Jams glanced at the notes she'd scribbled. Uh, I can include a reading nook and a knitting corner. (sighs) We might be able to squeeze a mudroom. A small one. Little Hedgehog and BB blinked. Then they shrugged and smiled. Yay! Yay. And what is your budget for the project? Our budget? You're inquiring about our budget? Uh, yes. My designs are quite expensive. Ms. Jams eyed them, took a sip of her coffee, and casually waved a paw at her trophy case, which contained dozens of sparkling architecture awards she clearly spent a lot of time polishing. Little Hedgehog and BB looked at each other. BB, do you have any money? In my family, we generally barter. Moments later, Ms. Jams was ushering them to her burrow door. It closed behind them. Little Hedgehog, I am confident we can build the treehouse ourselves. With my skills and your creativity, it can be done. You are so right, BB. They linked arms and set off back to Little Hedgehog's burrow to get started on their treehouse. Alrighty, let's make sure we have all the tools we need. Little Hedgehog and BB were in a small clearing near the burrow. Their chosen tree, the site of their soon-to-be incredible treehouse, towered behind them. I have brought a hammer, a level, a protractor, Little Hedgehog made a list of all of BB's items in her sparkly notebook. And some sandpaper. Wow, BB, you are so prepared. This stuff I brought is more in the category of home decor, I suppose you could say. I have my shimmery streamers to hang from the chandelier, some knitting needles and wool for the knitting corner slash reading nook, and this big framed photo of us singing our duet at the school assembly. Little Hedgehog and BB both thought back to when they got on stage for an impromptu musical performance, when the school assembly seemed like it was putting everyone to sleep. La 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 la! They clapped their teensy paws together and giggled at the memory. Finally, they went to work. BB focused on the actual construction, while Little Hedgehog held up a lantern so BB could see what she was doing. It was the middle of the night, after all. Little Hedgehog focused on inviting every animal that passed by to their tree housewarming party. We're thinking of a mushroom barbecue, maybe some lime aid, and dancing. Definitely a lot of dancing, Little Hedgehog said to a snail on its way through the grass. Um, I don't really do dancing, the snail said. Oh, we can play some slow songs, too. You can just bob your head. The snail bobbed its head and disappeared into the darkness. A raccoon passed by next. What are you all up to this fine evening? Treehouse building. It's going to be magnificent. You must come to our treehouse warming party. Oh, I love parties. I don't want to brag, but I have been called the life of the party on three separate occasions. They were all rather small gatherings, but I still believe it has some significance. Then we need you. We're going to have a chocolate fountain, and there will be some chandelier swinging. You've convinced me, and I'll make sure to bring a fiddle. The raccoon scampered off to the dumpster, located behind a nearby music store. BB continued to work on the treehouse, while Little Hedgehog made sure she had all the light she needed. Occasionally, BB overheard Little Hedgehog whispering in the darkness. Are you sure you'd be okay in there for the whole party? 
but Bibi was too busy to figure out who she was talking to. After a few more animals passed by, Yes, foxes are welcome. They just have to sign a no-eat agreement upon entry. Bibi stopped working and turned to Little Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog, please, gaze at my work. Little Hedgehog twirled around and found her way up the steps, wrapping around the tree trunk. The structure B.B. had built had a ceiling so low, Little Hedgehog had to stoop to enter it. B.B. squeezed in behind her and grinned. B.B., <gasps> this is fantastic. Thank you. This is marvelous. Thank you. This is... B.B., is this the mudroom? B.B. blinked. This is where you take off your hat before you go in to the part with the chandelier. Right, B.B.? This is... This is it. This is the treehouse. Little Hedgehog peered around. There wasn't much to peer at. The room was very small. But as she held up the lantern, she saw that B.B. had placed the knitting wool in a tiny corner. She'd propped up a book as well. Little Hedgehog beamed and clapped her teensy paws together. B.B., this is perfect. You're not disappointed? Of course not. But there's no chandelier. Little Hedgehog looked around the tiny room. There was a hook-like nub of wood sticking out of the ceiling. She took the lantern and held it up as high as she could. The lantern's handle hooked on and it hung there, lighting up the whole treehouse. Now we have a chandelier. They both grinned. What about the dance party you were telling everyone about? We could fit a few dancing snails, but I don't know if even one raccoon will fit. Hmm, I might have just the idea for that. A few nights later, Little Hedgehog and BB hosted their treehouse warming party. There was music, there was dancing, both fast and slow. There were tiny lanterns twinkling, and little hedgehogs' shimmery streamers hung from the tree branches. The party took place in the clearing next to the treehouse. Little hedgehog took the big framed photo of her and BB singing their duet at school and propped it up against the tree trunk. All of their friends took turns climbing the little set of stairs to peek inside the treehouse. The snail thought it was enormous. Ms. Jams thought it was structurally impressive. Mr. Hedgehog finally figured out where his lantern had disappeared to. So that's where it's been. At the end of the night, Little Hedgehog had everyone gather around. I will now reveal my latest collection. It was my first temporary one-night-only collection. Hit it, Marty! Marty was the raccoon who had promised to bring a fiddle. And bring a fiddle, he did. With a wave of Little Hedgehog's paw, the tiny lanterns hanging all around the party emptied themselves of their tiny inhabitants, fireflies. They danced in loops before swirling away into the night of the forest. so sweet. The fireflies? Little hedgehog, is that who you were whispering to while I was building? Yes. They kept asking me to whisper. For some reason, my voice was just too much for them. After everyone had gone home, Little Hedgehog and BB climbed the stairs to their treehouse. BB? Yes, Little Hedgehog. I have one last thing to show you. Is it a pastel rendering of a bowl of fruit? No. Is it a rosemary eucalyptus aromatherapy candle? No. Is it an ancient book of spells and incantations? <gasps> that would be so fun. But no, I'll show you. Little Hedgehog produced an extendable ladder from behind her prickles. She leaned it against the wall of the treehouse and climbed up. Bibi watched as Little Hedgehog pushed up 
on the ceiling. And it opened. Little Hedgehog climbed up and disappeared. Come on up, Bibi. Bibi climbed the ladder and squeezed through into the second story of the treehouse. Little Hedgehog, Bibi said, looking around at the tiny space they were in. How did you do this? There was even a little window they could peek out of to see the sky. Miss Jams helped me. I went to see her again, and I bartered, B.B. She needed some dance choreography help. She's going to be honored with another architecture award, and she wants her acceptance speech to be extra dancey. I'm very impressed. Now we have a treehouse with two stories. Because one story is never enough. Little Hedgehog and B.B. giggled. They stayed up there until they saw night start to give way to morning. They climbed down the ladder and fell asleep on the pile of yarn in their knitting corner. The treehouse fell silent, just as the sun crested the hill. new email. Here we go. Dear Rhea, we loved the story. Sincerely, the studio spiders. Well, that was was nice for a change. New email again. P.S. You forgot about the chargers. The chargers? What is, what are they talking about? Oh, okay. Wow. There are three teeny tiny chargers in there. I didn't even see those. Wait, how did they even plug them in? Oh, that makes my brain hurt. All right, I will leave them in the corner for you. (sighs) Anyway, I love how Little Hedgehog and BB always make the best of whatever situation they're in. They look for the bright spots. They find magic in the ordinary. I'm trying to be more like them every day. I don't always do it well. Sometimes I just complain about things. But I'm trying. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Peter K. runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Big thank you to Bonnie and Lada for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to Alex, Christian, and Grace for the sound effects used in this story. And thank you, as always, for listening in. <laughs>